Welcome to the Unsolved Mysteries Iceberg Part 2, where we explore some of the most fascinating and dark unsolved mysteries. On this iceberg, we deal with a wide variety of unsolved mysteries, including true crime, myths and legends, strange events, cryptids, internet mysteries, unexplained phenomenon, and more. The Solway Firth Spaceman. The Solway Firth Spaceman photograph was taken by Jim Templeton on May 23, 1964. Templeton, a firefighter from Carlisle, Cumberland, was photographing his five-year-old daughter in a pastoral scene near the Solway Firth in Cumbria, England. The resulting image unexpectedly featured a peculiar figure in the background, resembling a quote-unquote spaceman. The photograph gained immediate attention upon development. Templeton insisted he saw no one else when he took the picture, and Kodak experts confirmed the photo was not tampered with. The mystery deepened, leading to various theories ranging from photographic anomalies to extraterrestrial visitations. The image quickly caught the media's eye, circulating in newspapers and attracting the interest of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. It became a staple example in discussions about unexplained phenomena, with numerous interpretations and analyses attempting to explain the figure's origin. The story also caught the attention of local authorities and even reportedly led to inquiries by the police and government officials. Over the years, several theories have been proposed to explain the Solway Firth spaceman. Some suggest it was an optical illusion, a trick of light and shadow, However, the most popular theory holds that the spaceman is actually Templeton's wife, standing with her back to the camera, her dress appearing white due to overexposure. At any rate, the mysterious nature of the image continues to attract fascination, even if it is earthly in origin, the disappearance of Michael Rockefeller. Michael Rockefeller, born in 1938, was the youngest son of New York governor, later vice president, Nelson Rockefeller. Raised in an extremely prominent and wealthy family, Michael showed an early interest in the arts and different cultures. He graduated from Harvard University in 1960 with a degree in history and economics and participated in his first New Guinea expedition around that time. This expedition marked the beginning of his deep fascination with the Asmat region of New Guinea, known for its rich tribal art and complex cultural practices. In 1961, Michael Rockefeller embarked on an expedition to the Asmat region of New Guinea, then part of the Netherlands New Guinea, to collect artifacts and study the local Asmat culture, famous for its intricate wood carving and unique rituals. During his time there, Rockefeller built strong relationships with the local tribes and amassed a significant collection of their artifacts, intending to bring them back to the United States for cultural and educational purposes. The disappearance of Michael Rockefeller occurred on November 19, 1961. He was traveling with Dutch anthropologist René Wassing in a small boat when it capsized off the coast of southwest New Guinea. After several failed attempts to signal for help, Rockefeller decided to swim to shore to get help, reportedly saying, I think I can make it. He was never seen again. The Dutch government conducted an extensive search, but no trace of Rockefeller was found. Officially, he was presumed drowned, but the lack of concrete evidence fueled widespread speculation and alternative theories about his fate. The initial search efforts for Michael Rockefeller were extensive but fruitless. Helicopters, boats, and planes were deployed in the search, covering a vast area of the Asmat region's coastline and dense jungles. The Dutch authorities, with assistance from the Rockefeller family, conducted thorough ground and aerial searches, but the challenging terrain and vastness of the area hampered their efforts. After two weeks of intensive searching, the official rescue operation was called off, though private efforts by the Rockefeller family continued for some time. Michael Rockefeller's disappearance has been the subject of numerous theories and much speculation. 
The most prevalent theory is that he drowned while trying to swim to shore. However, other more controversial theories have emerged. One theory suggests that Rockefeller reached the shore, but was ended by local Azmat tribes people, possibly in retaliation for previous conflicts with colonial authorities. This theory was fueled by reports of sporadic violence in the region and the Azmat's complex history with headhunting and ritual warfare. Another theory proposes that Rockefeller survived and lived among the tribes, either by choice or necessity. This theory gained traction due to reports of a white man living among the tribes in the years following his disappearance. However, these reports were never substantiated. Some even speculated that Rockefeller chose to disappear due to the pressures of his life in the public eye, but this is widely considered unlikely given his known character and interests. Over the years, various investigations have been conducted into Rockefeller's disappearance. Journalists, adventurers, and members of the Azmat tribe have attempted to shed light on the mystery. In 1969, Journalist Milt Macklin traveled to New Guinea to investigate Rockefeller's disappearance and published his findings in a book, suggesting the possibility that Rockefeller was ended by the Azmat. More recently, other researchers and writers have explored the case, each offering their own perspective on the likely events that led to Rockefeller's vanishing. On a more positive note, Michael Rockefeller's disappearance had a significant impact on the study of Azmat culture and on the study of New Guinea in general. His collection of Azmat artifacts, eventually housed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, became one of the most important collections of its kind, offering insights into a relatively unknown culture. The Lost City of Zerzura. Zerzura, often referred to as the Lost City of Zerzura, is a mythical oasis city said to exist in the Sahara Desert and located either in Libya or Egypt. The first mentions of Zerzura date back to the 13th century in Arabic literature. It was described as a white city, full of treasures, hidden among the sand dunes and only accessible to those who knew its secret location. The legend of Zerzura captivated explorers and adventurers for centuries becoming a symbol of the ultimate desert treasure, shrouded in mystery and allure. The myths surrounding Zerzura are rich and varied. It was believed to be a city of immense wealth, guarded by black giants who stood at its gates. Tales spoke of vast gardens, palaces adorned with precious stones, and a sleeping king and queen waiting to be awakened by a brave explorer. The city was said to vanish and reappear like a mirage, making it an elusive and tantalizing target for treasure seekers and adventurers. The quest for Zerzura inspired numerous expeditions, particularly in the early 20th century. These expeditions combined scientific research with a sense of adventure, mapping unexplored territories and studying the desert's geography and Bedouin tribes. Despite enduring harsh desert conditions, sandstorms, and the vast, disorienting landscape of the Sahara, none of these expeditions succeeded in finding Zerzura. It doesn't appear that any legitimate expeditions to find Zerzura have been undertaken since the Second World War. All that said, perhaps the legend derives from a wealthy oasis city that has since been lost to the sands of time the Stone Spheres of Costa Rica. The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica were first discovered in the 1930s by workers of the United Fruit Company while clearing the jungle in the Decay Delta region. These spheres range in size from a few centimeters to over two meters in diameter and can weigh up to 15 tons. Made from limestone or sandstone, their perfect roundness and smooth surface are striking considering they date back to as early as 600 AD. Numerous theories have been proposed regarding the sphere's origins and purpose. Some suggest they were status symbols or associated with the residences of prominent people. Others speculate they might have had astronomical or navigational purposes, aligning with celestial bodies or used in ceremonies. 
However, the lack of written records from the region and time, combined with the effects of the post-Columbian conquest, lead to most theories being speculative. Regardless of their purpose or how they were created, they were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2014, and the mysterious spheres remain a source of local pride. The Toynbee Tiles The Toynbee Tiles are mysterious plaques found embedded in the asphalt of streets in various American cities and a few South American locations. First noticed in the 1980s, these tiles typically measure approximately the size of a license plate. Each tile bears a cryptic message, most famously, Toynbee idea in movie, 2001, resurrect dead on planet Jupiter. The origin and purpose of these tiles remain unknown, sparking a range of theories. Some link them to Ray Bradbury's short story, The Toynbee Convector. Others to historian Arnold J. Toynbee, or even to Stanley Kubrick's film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. The tiles references to Jupiter and resurrection fuel speculation about their creator's beliefs in cosmic life cycles or extraterrestrial life. Toynbee tiles have been discovered in over 24 major U.S. cities and in several South American countries, including Brazil and Argentina. Their widespread distribution suggests either one highly motivated individual or a group behind their creation and installation with a significant commitment to spreading their message. Interpretations of the Toynbee tiles range from them being an elaborate art project to a message from a group or individual with a deep philosophical or religious conviction. The consistent theme of resurrection and space travel in the tiles' messages suggests a belief system influenced by science fiction, philosophy, or a desire for transcendence the disappearance of Kurt Sova. Kurt Sova, a 17-year-old from Newburgh Heights, Ohio, vanished under mysterious circumstances in October 1981. Known for his easygoing nature, Kurt's disappearance was out of character, sparking immediate concern. He was last seen alive attending a Halloween house party. According to his friend, who he attended with, Kurt was drinking Everclear while he was there. When he didn't return home, his family launched a frantic search. The search for Kurt involved local authorities, friends, family, and community members. Despite extensive efforts, including scouring the neighborhood and nearby areas, no trace of him was found initially. The police investigation uncovered few leads with party attendees providing limited and sometimes conflicting information. The lack of evidence and clues added a layer of frustration and mystery to the case. Five days after his disappearance, Kurt's body was discovered in a ravine, a location previously searched, raising questions about the body's placement after the initial search. The autopsy revealed no clear cause of death, no signs of struggle, and minimal alcohol content in his system. This discovery only deepened the mystery as the circumstances of his death seemed inexplicable, with medical examiners unable to determine how or why he died. Law enforcement faced significant criticism for their poor handling of the Kurt Sova case. The initial delay in treating his disappearance as serious and the subsequent inability to provide answers or a clear direction in the investigation led to public frustration. Over the years, the case remained open, but inactive, with occasional reviews yielding no new clues. The Las Lunas Decalogue Stone. The Las Lunas Decalogue Stone, also known as the Commandment Rock, is a large boulder located near Las Lunas, New Mexico. It was reportedly first observed in the 1930s by Frank Hibben, a local archaeologist. The stone is notable for its inscription, which is carved into the flat panel of the rock face. The inscription on the Las Lunas stone is remarkable for its content. It appears to be an abridged version of the Decalogue, more commonly known as the Ten Commandments. What makes it peculiar is the script in which it's written. 
a form of Paleo-Hebrew, which was used in the first millennium BC. This has led to significant speculation about the stone's origin and authenticity. The Las Lunas Decalogue stone has been a subject of controversy among archaeologists, linguists, and historians. Some assert it's a pre-Columbian artifact, suggesting a link between ancient Hebrew people and the Americas long before Columbus. This theory, however, is often dismissed by mainstream scholars due to the lack of corroborating evidence and the potential for modern forgery. However, the fact that the script includes a mixture of ancient and more modern Hebrew forms has fueled arguments for a more recent creation. More evidence pointing to this stone being a forgery come from the lack of any other relevant archaeological finds in the area to suggest this was the work of a pre-Columbian group of Semitic migrants. To me, I find the real mystery to be when and why was this forgery created? The Tunguska event. On the morning of June 30, 1908, a massive explosion occurred near the Tunguska River in Siberia, Russia. The event, now known as the Tunguska event, is considered one of the largest impact events in recorded history, despite no crater being found. Witnesses reported seeing a blindingly bright object streak across the sky before a shockwave knocked people off their feet and devastated an area of about 830 square miles of forest. While the unusual event was reported on immediately due to the extreme remoteness of the region, a full investigation would not happen for decades. Eyewitness accounts described a fireball in the sky followed by a series of explosions and a shockwave that felt like an earthquake. The event caused windows to shatter hundreds of kilometers away and produced atmospheric effects noticeable across Europe and Asia. The force of the blast was estimated to be about 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and over 80 million trees were leveled. Also, to give some insight into just how remote this place is, it may have caused as few as three deaths. Several theories of varying credibility have been proposed to explain the Tunguska event. The most widely accepted theory is that it was caused by an airburst of a meteoroid or comet fragment exploding in the atmosphere before hitting the ground. This explains the lack of an impact crater. Other theories include a black hole passing through the Earth, an antimatter collision, or alien involvement. While these alternative theories have generated significant interest, they lack supporting evidence and are not widely accepted. The first detailed investigation began in 1927, when Soviet scientist Leonid Kulik led an expedition to the site. Subsequent expeditions to the Tunguska site have aimed to gather physical evidence to support the meteoroid or comet theory. Soil samples showed high levels of certain elements that could be linked to a cosmic object. Tree ring studies in the area indicated accelerated growth in the years following the event, possibly due to increased levels of nitrogen, a byproduct of a cosmic explosion. However, no direct evidence of a meteorite, such as fragments, has been found at the site, partly due to the challenging nature of the terrain and the event's age. One particularly interesting theory is that a local lake on the Tunguska River called Lake Checo was actually an impact crater lake. An Italian team investigating the lake in 2008 concluded that the lake was only about 100 years old based upon radiocarbon dating. However, alternative radiocarbon dating tests have indicated that the lake is substantially older than the Tunguska event. Whatever the case, the Tunguska event remains one of the world's foremost unsolved mysteries till this day. The Babushka Lady The Babushka Lady is an unidentified figure associated with the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas. This mysterious individual, captured in several photographs and films of the assassination, is seen wearing a headscarf resembling those traditionally worn by elderly Russian women, hence the nickname Babushka Lady. 
In the footage, the babushka lady is seen holding a camera or photographic device, appearing to film or photograph the events as the president's motorcade passed by Dealey Plaza. Her presence and actions are intriguing because she was in close proximity to the assassination and seemingly captured crucial moments of the event. Despite extensive investigations, she has never been publicly identified, nor has the footage she might have captured been recovered. Following the assassination, the FBI and other investigative bodies made significant efforts to locate and identify the babushka lady. They appealed to the public for information and scrutinized films and photographs from the assassination in an attempt to glean more details about her identity. However, these efforts were unsuccessful, leaving her identity and the potential evidence she possessed a mystery. Numerous theories have emerged about the babushka lady's identity and her potential connection to the assassination. Some speculate she was a Russian spy, while others believe she was a local Dallas resident who happened to be at the scene. The most significant lead came when a woman named Beverly Oliver claimed to be the babushka lady in the 1970s. However, her story was met with skepticism as the camera she claimed to use was not available until after 1963. Further, she claimed that she was visited by quote unquote FBI agents who confiscated the undeveloped film from her and never returned it to her possession. No records exist to support this confiscation event. The babushka lady's unexplained presence and the missing footage she may have captured fuel conspiracy theories and debates about what really happened that day. The wow signal. On August 15, 1977, a remarkable signal was detected by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. Astronomer Jerry R. Amon, reviewing the data, was so impressed by the signal's intensity and uniqueness that he circled it and wrote, wow, in the margins, hence its name. The signal, originating from the constellation Sagittarius, lasted 72 seconds and has never been detected again. The wow signal stood out for its narrow, focused bandwidth, closely matching the frequency a civilization might use to send a purposeful message. The signal's intensity was 30 times stronger than background noise making it distinctly different from typical space radio signals. The WOW signal's one-time occurrence made it difficult for scientists to study it in detail. Multiple attempts to locate the signal again, including immediate rescanning of the area and numerous follow-up observations, have been unsuccessful. Analysis of the signal's data has led to various interpretations, but the lack of repetition has prevented any conclusive findings. This has fueled ongoing debates about its origin and nature. Theories about the WOW signal range from scientifically plausible to highly speculative. Some believe it was a transmission from an extraterrestrial intelligence, given its frequency and characteristics. Others suggest more mundane explanations, like a reflection of a terrestrial signal from space debris or a passing comet. However, no theory has been universally accepted or proven, maintaining the signal's mysterious status. The Man from Tored. The story of the Man from Tored begins in 1954 at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. A well-dressed man arrived at immigration, presenting a passport from Tored, a country that does not exist. His passport, filled with previous stamps, seemed legitimate but for the fictional country. Airport officials were baffled by his insistence that Tared was a real nation, located between France and Spain. The man was detained for further questioning. He claimed Tared had existed for centuries and was confused by its absence on the map. Officials placed him in a hotel room for the night, under security watch. Mysteriously, by the next morning, he had vanished without a trace from the locked room leaving no clues behind. This incident sparked various theories. Some proposed he was a traveler from a parallel universe where Tarid exists. Others thought it might be an elaborate hoax or a case of mistaken identity. 
the lack of tangible evidence like the man's belongings or documented records of the event fueled more speculative explanations, including supernatural or extraterrestrial involvement. Oh yeah, and the biggest mystery about the man from Torred's story? How this story ever gained any traction. There is no evidence to indicate that this story ever took place. To quote Jonathan Frakes, it's fiction, a total fabrication. We made that one up, the Hestalen lights. In the remote valley of Hestalen in Norway, a mystifying light phenomenon has been observed for decades, known as the Hestalen lights. These lights, varying in color, intensity, and duration, have been reported for almost a century. Residents described seeing lights floating or darting across the sky, often at great speeds. The lights varied in color, from bright white to deep red, and sometimes appeared simultaneously in different formations. Their unpredictable nature made them a subject of fascination. Since their discovery, numerous scientific expeditions have been undertaken to study the Hestalen lights. Researchers from various fields, including physics, geology, and atmospheric science, have conducted experiments and set up observation stations. Despite extensive studies, the exact cause of these lights remains unexplained. Theories range from plasma formations due to ionized iron dust to unknown natural gases to reflections. The Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin, a linen cloth bearing the negative image of a man, has long been a subject of reverence, speculation, and intense study. It is believed by some to be the burial shroud of Jesus Christ and displays the faint imprint of the front and back of a human body. The shroud first appeared in historical records in the 14th century in France, where it was denounced as a forgery. It was acquired by the House of Savoy in 1453 and ultimately moved to Turin, Italy in 1578, where it has remained. The Catholic Church has never formally endorsed the shroud as authentic, but it is venerated by many as a holy relic. The shroud has undergone various scientific tests to determine its age and how the image was formed. In 1988, radiocarbon dating tests performed by labs in Oxford, Zurich, and Arizona found the linen was made between 1260 and 1390, suggesting it was not old enough to be contemporaneous with Jesus. However, some have challenged these findings, citing potential contamination or repair material that could have skewed the results. The Shroud of Turin has been at the center of numerous controversies. Skeptics argue that the radiocarbon dating is conclusive evidence of its medieval origin, suggesting it's a clever forgery. However, proponents of the Shroud's authenticity question the dating methods, pointing to potential contamination and historical reports of the Shroud's existence before the medieval period. Additionally, the exact mechanism of the image's formation remains a subject of debate with no universally accepted explanation. Regardless of its origin, the Shroud of Turin holds significant cultural and religious importance. For some believers, it's a tangible connection to Jesus Christ. Quick aside, you've made it this far. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more Lazy Chill Zone content. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. The Berenstain Bears Mandela Effect. The Berenstain Bears Mandela Effect is the theory that at least two parallel universes exist, one in which the popular children's series The Berenstain Bears has the stain suffix, and the other where it had the more popular and well-known stein suffix. Supporters of this theory argue that the sheer number of people recalling Berenstein with certainty cannot be merely coincidental or a simple error. They propose that this collective memory might be evidence of a crossover from a parallel universe where the spelling was indeed Berenstein. This idea aligns with theories in quantum physics that suggest the existence of multiple parallel universes. Many individuals have shared personal experiences and vivid memories of the book spelled as Berenstein. These accounts often include specific details, 
such as recalling the books from childhood or teaching their own children with these books. The consistency and conviction in these recollections add weight to the theory that these memories might originate from an alternate reality. Either debunking or lending credence to this idea, depending on your view, Berenstein merchandise has been discovered, though officially all Berenstein goods are misprints. The notion that the Berenstein Bears Mandela effect could be real and indicative of alternate realities or parallel universes is a fascinating concept that stretches the boundaries of conventional thought. However, my view on this specific Mandela effect is that it was caused due to the overwhelming popularity of the suffix Stein over the virtually unheard of stain. Lake City Quiet Pills. Lake City Quiet Pills is an internet mystery that began with a Reddit user named Religion of Peace, who expressed interest in apparent knowledge of assassinations and often used the phrase, Lake City Quiet Pills. The mystery unfolded following the announcement of Religion of Peace's death by another user named 2-6, leading to a series of intriguing online discoveries and speculations. Internet sleuths discovered a website named LakeCityQuietPills.com, which was linked to Religion of Peace's email. The site, which no longer exists, reportedly contained explicit material, but a hidden forum was also found. The forum included suspicious job postings in the EU and Asia, leading to speculations about illegal activities possibly linked to the website. Some believed Lake City Quiet Pills might have been a front for ex-military contract assassins, speculating that Quiet Pills referred to bullets. Further, internet detectives were able to quote-unquote connect the dots between the elimination of a Palestinian operative and a date posted by someone associated with Lake City Quiet Pills. My view is that this was likely some sort of inside joke or ARG while I have no doubt such sinister organizations exist, the idea that they post vague clues on the internet about their identity seems far-fetched. The mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe, an iconic figure in American literature, is as famous for his mysterious death as he is for his Gothic works. Poe's death in October 1849 has been a source of speculation and intrigue with numerous theories proposed to explain the circumstances surrounding it. Poe was found delirious on the streets of Baltimore, Maryland on October 3, 1849, in a state of great distress and wearing clothes that were not his own. He was taken to the Washington Medical College, where he died on October 7. The cause of his death was initially stated as congestion of the brain, but later reports suggested cerebral inflammation, both vague diagnoses common in the 19th century. No autopsy report or death certificate has been found, adding to the mystery. Poe's medical records and documents related to his death have been lost or were never documented. Numerous theories have been proposed regarding Poe's death. These range from alcohol abuse or drug abuse, to more sinister theories involving murder. Other medical explanations include rabies, epilepsy, or carbon monoxide poisoning. Each theory has its proponents, but none have been definitively proven. One particularly interesting theory is that Poe had been forcefully abducted to vote multiple times in an election, potentially explaining his unusual clothing. That said, Poe's lifestyle and health provide some context to his death. Known for his alcoholism and unstable health, Poe struggled with financial difficulties and personal tragedies throughout his life. These factors have led some to speculate that he consensually ended himself, either by alcohol, drugs, or a combination of both. Following his death, and to add another layer to the mystery, Poe's reputation was tarnished by Rufus Griswold, a literary rival who wrote a scathing obituary and later a biographical article filled with fabrications. Griswold's portrayal of Poe as a mad, drunken, womanizing opium addict was widely accepted, 
affecting Poe's posthumous reputation for many years. What makes this more unusual, however, is that Griswold was ultimately appointed Poe's literary executor, leading to him having editorial control over Poe's works. Despite this unusual circumstance, Griswold does not appear to have ever been treated as a suspect. The Fruit of the Loom Mandela Effect. So before I dive into this particular Mandela Effect, this is one I personally subscribe to. In fact, the only reason I knew what a cornucopia was is because I asked my mom what that thing on the Fruit of the Loom label was. Anyway. This particular Mandela effect centers around the logo of the Fruit of the Loom brand, with many people, myself included, recalling a cornucopia, commonly known as a horn of plenty behind the fruit in the logo, despite such an element allegedly never having been part of it. Many people vividly recall seeing a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo during their childhood, or at various points in their life. This alleged collective misremembering is intriguing, because the logo, upon examination of the company's history, has never featured such an element. It has allegedly always been a collection of fruit without any additional items. Adding to the mystery, everyone seems to remember the cornucopia looking the exact same way. The Devil's Footprints. In February 1855, a bizarre and unexplained event occurred in Devon, England, known as the Devil's Footprints. After a heavy snowfall, residents awoke to find a trail of hoof-like marks that stretched for miles across the snow-covered landscape. The footprints, which resembled those of a cloven hoof, created a stir of fear and fascination. The footprints were approximately four inches long and three inches across, with a stride of eight to 16 inches. They traveled in a straight line over and around obstacles including houses, rivers, and haystacks. Remarkably, the trail seemed to continue unbroken for over 100 miles, suggesting the maker of the footprints had the ability to walk unhindered by physical barriers. The phenomenon caused a significant public reaction, with many believing that the footprints were the work of the devil, hence the name. Local clergymen fueled these fears, suggesting it was a sign of evil presences. Various theories were proposed, including animals, including a kangaroo, pranksters, or a balloon, yet none fully explained the phenomenon's strange characteristics. I don't get how this one caused such an uproar. I guess people just scared more easily back in the 19th century. The Nazca Lines. The Nazca Lines are a series of large ancient geoglyphs located in the Nazca Desert in southern Peru. They were created by the Nazca culture between 500 BC and 500 AD and are among the most extraordinary examples of ancient monumental art. The Nazca Lines were first noticed from the air in the 1920s by pilots flying over the Peruvian coastal plains. The Nazca Lines encompass over 800 straight lines 300 geometric figures, and 70 animal and plant designs, known as biomorphs. These include representations of spiders, monkeys, fish, sharks, orcas, and lizards. The largest figures are over 200 meters across. The lines were made by removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert and revealing the light-colored earth beneath. This simple technique resulted in striking contrasts visible from great distances. Numerous theories have been proposed about the purpose of the Nazca lines. Some suggest they were part of religious or ceremonial practices, while others propose they were astronomical markers or guides for sacred processions. One theory suggests they were a part of a ritualistic practice to summon water which was scarce in the arid region. The Nazca lines are significant not only for their size and quantity, but also for their cultural and archeological value. They provide insights into the Nazca culture's understanding of mathematics and surveying. The geoglyphs demonstrate the Nazca people's ability to design massive artworks that could only be fully appreciated from a bird's eye view. 
a feat that fascinates both scientists and historians. Advancements in technology have enhanced the study of the Nazca lines. Aerial photography and satellite imagery have provided new perspectives, revealing previously undiscovered geoglyphs. Ground-penetrating radar and drone technology are also being used to understand their construction and to monitor their condition. Oh yeah, and if you learned about these lines from ancient aliens, you guessed it. Aliens made the lines. The Devil's Bible. The Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, is a large medieval manuscript renowned for its size and the unique content it contains, including a full-page portrait of the devil. Created in the early 13th century in a Benedictine monastery in Bohemia, now the Czech Republic, it is the largest known medieval manuscript. The Devil's Bible is remarkable for its immense size, measuring about 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and almost 9 inches thick. Weighing approximately 165 pounds, it's composed of 310 leaves made from vellum. Its cover is made of wood and leather with metal embellishments. The manuscript contains a complete Bible, along with several other texts, including historical documents, medical treatises, and exorcism prayers. Its most famous feature is a full-page, striking illustration of the devil, which contributes to the manuscript's nickname. The book also contains a large illustration of the kingdom of heaven, juxtaposing the heavenly and infernal. No one is sure how this book was created. However, the legend surrounding the Devil's Bible tells of a monk who was sentenced to death by being walled alive. To avoid this fate, he promised to create a book containing all human knowledge overnight. As the task was impossible, he made a pact with the Devil. The Devil then completed the book in exchange for the monk's soul, leading to the manuscript's demonic association. And yeah, I guess including a super metal drawing of the devil was part of the deal too. And if you want to see the devil's Bible today, you'll have to travel to Stockholm, where it is today found in the National Library of Sweden. Also, interesting aside, the devil's Bible was once also owned by Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor. Rudolf II also owned the Voynich Manuscript, which appears in the first part of this iceberg series. Piri Rise Map The Piri Rise Map, named after its creator, the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Rise, dates back to 1513. It was discovered in 1929 in the Topkapi Palace, Istanbul, significantly adding to the world's historical cartographic records. Piri Rise compiled this map using various sources, including older maps and explorers' accounts. It's noteworthy for being one of the earliest maps to depict the Americas, reflecting the geographical knowledge of the early 16th century. The map's depiction of the Atlantic, including parts of Europe, North Africa, and the Brazilian coast, is surprisingly accurate for its time. The level of detail in the coastal outlines especially the Brazilian coastline, suggests a remarkable understanding of longitude, a feat not common in 16th century maps. But what makes the map so mysterious? The map's representation of what appears to be Antarctica. This depiction predates the continent's official discovery by over 300 years. Some suggest that this indicates ancient knowledge of the coastline, but most scholars attribute it to speculative cartography common in that era, or possibly confusion with the Patagonian coast. Mokale Mbembe. The Mokale Mbembe, an entity reported in the Congo River Basin, is a well-known cryptid. Described by local tribes and a handful of Western explorers, it has been depicted as a living dinosaur, drawing significant interest from cryptozoologists and adventurers alike. It is often described resembling a sauropod dinosaur with a long neck, round body, and tail. Local legends speak of a creature living in the rivers and swamps of the Congo Basin, primarily in the areas of Cameroon 
and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Descriptions of its size vary, but most accounts suggest a large creature capable of disturbing waterways and frightening local wildlife. Interest in the creature emerged in the early 20th century when Western explorers heard local stories about a mysterious creature. Several expeditions were launched to find evidence of its existence, inspired by the discovery of other lost animals like the okapi. These expeditions brought back intriguing, yet inconclusive accounts and evidence. The scientific community remains extremely skeptical of the cryptid's existence. Critics argue that the dense Congo Basin environment is not conducive to supporting a large, dinosaur-like creature, particularly one that has supposedly survived since prehistoric times. Additionally, the lack of physical evidence, such as bones or definitive photographic proof, leads many scientists to dismiss the reports as misidentifications of known wildlife or cultural myths. Exploring the Congo Basin for evidence presents significant challenges. The region's dense rainforests, vast swamps, and limited infrastructure make it one of the most difficult terrains for scientific investigation. Political instability in the area has also hindered extensive research. These factors contribute to the mystery, as they provide a plausible reason for why such a creature, if it exists, has eluded discovery ghost blimp. The ghost blimp refers to the mysterious case of the U.S. Navy's L-8 blimp, which embarked on a routine patrol mission on August 16, 1942, but returned without its crew. This incident, occurring during World War II off the coast of San Francisco, remains one of the most puzzling episodes in aviation history. The L-8 blimp, piloted by Lieutenant Ernest Cody and Ensign Charles Adams, was tasked with patrolling for submarines. Hours into the mission, the blimp drifted back to land and eventually crashed in Daly City. Bizarrely, no crew members were found on board, despite their belongings and parachutes being intact. The blimp itself showed no signs of distress or combat. The Navy's investigation provided no definitive answers. Theories about the crew's disappearance varied widely, from espionage and abduction to an accident at sea. Some speculated that the crew may have fallen overboard or abandoned the blimp for unknown reasons. However, the lack of concrete evidence left all theories as mere speculation. Wild allegations also started to circulate, including that the two blimp pilots had been captured by the Japanese or even defected to the Japanese side together. However, again, there is absolutely no evidence for this. The Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism, an ancient Greek device, is often referred to as the world's first known analog computer. Discovered in 1901 in the Antikythera shipwreck off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera, this complex mechanism dates back to around 100 BC and demonstrates remarkable engineering skills from the Hellenistic period. Found by sponge divers, the mechanism initially resembled a lump of corroded bronze and wood fragments. It wasn't until years later that its true significance was realized. Early examinations revealed gears and inscriptions, but the device's purpose remained a mystery. It was only with advanced imaging technologies in the late 20th and early 21st centuries that researchers began to uncover its astonishing capabilities. The Antikythera mechanism is composed of over 30 meshing bronze gears. These gears were used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses decades in advance and to track the four-year cycle of the ancient Olympic Games. It has dials on the front and back. The front dial displays the Greek zodiac and an Egyptian calendar, while the back contains a lunar calendar, predicting eclipse patterns. The craftsmanship indicates a sophisticated understanding of astronomical cycles and mathematical ratios. The mechanism's technology was so advanced that similar levels of engineering were not seen again until the development of mechanical clocks in medieval Europe. 
Its precise function and use remain a subject of research, but it is widely believed to have been used for astronomical predictions and as a teaching tool. Bennington Triangle Mystery The Bennington Triangle disappearances refer to a series of mysterious vanishings that occurred between 1945 and 1950 in an area around Bennington, Vermont. The first noted disappearance was that of Mitty Rivers, a 74-year-old experienced hunter and guide who vanished while hunting in the area in November 1945. He led a group of hunters and, on the way back, got ahead of them but was never seen again. Despite extensive searches, only his rifle was found. In December 1946, 18-year-old Paula Weldon disappeared while hiking on the long trail. Despite a large-scale search and investigation, no trace of her was found. This incident received significant media attention and led to the creation of the Vermont State Police. In 1949, James Tedford, a veteran, vanished from a bus en route to Bennington. He was last seen by passengers before the bus reached its destination, but he was gone when the bus arrived, with his belongings still on the luggage rack. In October 1950, eight-year-old Paul Jeffson disappeared near a farm in the area. He was in a truck while his mother fed pigs, but when she returned, he was gone. Search parties, including helicopters and bloodhounds, found no trace of him. The same month, Frida Langer, 53, vanished while hiking near Somerset Reservoir with her cousin. Unlike the other cases, her body was found the following May near an area that had been thoroughly searched, but no cause of death could be determined due to decomposition. Several theories have been proposed to explain the disappearances, ranging from natural to supernatural, with some of the most outlandish claims being that a Bigfoot-like creature stalks the woods nearby. However, more skeptical minds question whether any connection exists between these cases. Personally, I'm inclined to extreme skepticism on this one. Though this mystery has gained traction over the last decades, I see this as a series of likely completely unconnected incidents. The Lost City of Z. The Lost City of Z refers to a legendary ancient city purportedly located in the uncharted jungles of Brazil. It was popularized by the British explorer Percy Fawcett, who, influenced by earlier reports of a complex civilization in the Amazon, hypothesized the existence of a large, advanced city he called Zed. Fawcett's theory was inspired by his belief in a sophisticated, ancient culture in the Amazon, contrary to the prevailing views of the region at the time. Also, before I go on, The Lost City of Z sounds like the title of a 90s JRPG. Percy Fawcett embarked on multiple expeditions to find the Lost City of Z, the most notable being his final journey in 1925 with his son Jack and Jack's friend Raleigh Rimmel. They ventured into the Brazilian jungle but never returned, leading to one of the greatest mysteries of the early 20th century. Their disappearance spurred numerous rescue missions and speculative theories but no definitive evidence of their fate or the existence of the city was ever found. Recent archeological discoveries in the Amazon, such as the terraces and geoglyphs, suggest complex pre-Columbian societies did exist in the region, lending some credence to Fawcett's theories. However, no quote unquote lost cities have been found. The Clapham Wood Mysteries. The Clapham Wood Mysteries refer to a series of strange events and unexplained phenomena reported in Clapham Wood, located in West Sussex, England. Since the 1960s, the area has been associated with a range of mysterious occurrences, including unexplained disappearances, bizarre animal behavior, and alleged paranormal activities. Initial reports from the 1960s and 1970s involved accounts of pets and animals behaving erratically or disappearing in the woods. 
the area gained notoriety following several unexplained human disappearances. The most notable of these involved a local reverend who vanished in 1978 while walking his dog in the woods. His body was found four years later in an area previously searched extensively. Clapham Wood has been the subject of various paranormal investigations due to reports of strange lights, ghostly apparitions, and feelings of unease or dread experienced by visitors. Speculations around the Clapham Wood mysteries include the involvement of occult groups, particularly a satanic cult. Villisca Axe Slayings The Villisca Axe Slayings are one of the most chilling unsolved crimes in American history. Occurring on the night of June 9, 1912 in the small town of Villisca, Iowa, the gruesome ending of the Moore family and two house guests shocked the nation. Josiah B. Moore, his wife Sarah, their four children, and two guests, Ina and Lena Stillinger, were found brutally ended in their beds. Each victim had severe wounds from an axe. The brutality of the slayings, coupled with the lack of immediate suspects, plunged the town into fear and paranoia. The investigation into the murders was extensive but flawed from the start. Key evidence was compromised due to the crime scene's contamination by curious townspeople. Several suspects were considered, including a traveling minister named George Kelly, Frank F. Jones, a local businessman, and a transient laborer named Henry Lee Moore. However, despite multiple confessions and trials, no one was ever convicted. The Ningen. The Ningen is a cryptid reportedly sighted by Japanese fishermen and research vessels in the Antarctic Ocean. The term Ningen means human in Japanese, and the creature is described as a large, white, humanoid, underwater being. Alternatively, the Ningen is described as a terrestrial, bipedal creature that appears as a white ball with a set of legs attached. Though this second kind of Ningen is by far my favorite, this entry will refer to the first kind only. The creature was allegedly first spotted in the late 20th century, with the most common sightings occurring in the Antarctic Ocean. Alternatively, the creature and its lore was invented by Japanese internet users much more recently. Eyewitness accounts describe the creature as being about 20 to 30 meters in length with a predominantly human-like shape. To put that in perspective, that would place it on the same tier as the blue whale, the largest creature to ever exist. It is said to have a pale white complexion with distinct features such as arms and hands, sometimes described as having five-fingered appendages. Some reports also mention features like fins or a mermaid-like tail. Theories about the Ningen range from scientific to fantastical. Some propose it could be an undiscovered species of aquatic animal, possibly a giant ray or an albino whale. Others speculate more exotic origins, such as an unknown species of humanoid sea creatures or even extraterrestrial life. Sneha Philip. Sneha Ann Philip was an Indian American physician born on October 7, 1969, who mysteriously disappeared on September 10, 2001 the eve of the 9-11 attacks. Her case has sparked numerous theories and remains unsolved, capturing public and media interest over the years. At the time of her disappearance, she was a medical resident at St. Vincent's Hospital on Staten Island. On September 10th, she left her apartment in Battery Park in Lower Manhattan around 5.15 p.m. and was last seen at 7.18 p.m. on a security camera at a department store carrying shopping bags. That night, her husband, Ronald Lieberman, returned to their apartment and found Sneha was not there. He assumed she was staying with her brother or cousin, as she sometimes did. Earlier on September 10th, Sneha had been arraigned on a misdemeanor charge related to filing a false incident report. She and Lieberman reportedly had a loud argument outside the courthouse, after which she left alone. That evening, a clerk at a department store reported seeing Sneha shopping with another woman, who
who remains unidentified. The timing of Sneha's disappearance, a day before the September 11th terrorist attacks, led to theories that she might have died while trying to help victims at the World Trade Center, given her medical training. However, there was no concrete evidence to confirm this theory. Her family and husband believed this scenario, but police investigations suggested an alternate narrative. In the months before her disappearance, Sneha faced several personal challenges. She had been dismissed from her hospital residency for repeated tardiness and alleged alcohol-related issues. Police investigations revealed aspects of her personal life, including alleged extramarital affairs, which her family disputed. She also faced criminal charges for filing a false complaint about a colleague. In the years following her disappearance, Lieberman petitioned to have Sneha declared a victim of the September 11th attacks. Initially, a lower court declared her legally dead in 2004, but did not link her death to 9-11. After an appeal in 2008, a judge ruled it probable that Sneha died in the attacks, though there was no definitive proof. The Moon-Eyed People The Moon-Eyed People are part of a group mentioned in Cherokee folklore, known for their pale skin, light eyes, and nocturnal habits. The legend has been a subject of curiosity and various interpretations over the years. The legend of the Moon-Eyed People describes them as a race of small, pale-skinned humanoids with bearded faces and large blue eyes. According to Cherokee tales, their eyes were so sensitive to sunlight that they could only come out at night, earning them the name Moon-Eyed. They were reported to have built underground caves and low-lying huts to escape sunlight. Early European settlers documented Cherokee stories about the Moon-Eyed people. One interpretation suggests they were early European settlers themselves. Another theory posits a connection to a Welsh prince who allegedly landed in North America in the 12th century. Some Cherokee chiefs recounted stories of white men building fortifications along the Tennessee River. Some believe the Moon-Eyed people left physical traces in the Appalachian foothills, like Fort Mountain in Georgia, where remains of an ancient wall resembling European battlements exist. This and other similar structures have led to speculation that these were built by the Moon-Eyed people or related European settlers. However, the exact origins of these structures remain uncertain. That's part two of the Unsolved Mysteries iceberg in the bag. If you made it this far, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'm constantly creating new content for you to enjoy. Also, if you really want to take it to the next level, consider becoming a patron. My Patreon link is in my bio. Also, shout out to my patrons, Noah Schubert, Kazak Cutie, and Kurt the Squirt. Anyway, as always, until next time, stay healthy and peace out.